In their future, all of your movements will be traced. By the government, by your employers, by yourselves. There will be no more need to think. Everything will be done for you. These technological metaphysicians will shape the world around you. They will grow the economy outwards, consuming electricity and land. They will grow the economy inwards, consuming the mind and the body. Hello, I'm Bill Gates, Chairman of Microsoft. In this video, you're going to see the future, Windows. Microsoft first came up with the Windows concept back in 1983. And today, the leading software users have switched into the Windows environment. It's really incredible how quickly our powerful applications like Word and Excel and PowerPoint have been adopted. It's not just Microsoft applications. Even companies like Word Perfect and Lotus have now come out with Windows applications. And every week, we see new innovative work. It's really attracting all the innovation in the industry. We predicted this a long time ago, and now it, it's the future. Let's take a look. Capitalism has disappeared into technology. It conquers digitally, spreading in all directions. From their office towers in Bellevue, the conquerors reign over the metropolis. Some people think Bill Gates can see into the future, and he thinks the future is in digital pictures, that electronic images will permeate our world. When you get directions, it won't just be a map, you'll be able to see what that is. If you're thinking about buying something, you can see the store and go in. Bill Gates is a metaphysician, a digital priest of capital. Capital speaks through its priests. It makes them transcendent. Bill Gates predicts the future that Microsoft has the economic, technical, and political ability to create. His autobiography, Business at the Speed of Thought, is a futurist manifesto arguing for a world where all aspects of life should be compressed into a digital format. Microsoft is a master race organized for war. With its organizational ability, Microsoft lays its claws upon the digitized proletariat. The current system was devised for a world that was pre-digital and it's being run by people who are also pre-digital. So I believe we're on in a, a transitional phase here. In and out of the sky. The city of Microsoft is a desert. Its headquarters stretches across one-third of the geographical space of the municipality of Redmond, with 150 campus buildings, including satellite offices in Issaquah and Bellevue. The employees are given access to their own indoor mall and circulate every day through the parking lots, restaurants, cubicles, and distractions provided by their employer. They are watched every moment of the day and are surrounded by advertisements for the commodities they help create. This is the army that is digitizing the world, turning all life into circuitry, metal, and glass. Microsoft is the window between the natural world and the digital world, the interface that allows the organic to navigate the electronic. The Redmond campus is a hive mind, an apparatus of psychic repression that keeps its often depressed employees in a long narcosis that destroys their ability to comprehend the limits of the natural world. These workers are empty shells hanging onto the tree of death, their creativity and psychic energy sucked out and emptied. Everything they create is created for something else. In return for their services, they are awarded an alienating and insular life, where work is all and all is work. Their individual efforts all contribute to unified products, and the objects they create have objectified them in turn. Together they build the hive mind. Together they strive to create the purest form of information, the digital cloud severed from all constraints. They create this because they have nothing left. Their lives have been stolen, and 
and little by little the workers become cyborgs, fulfilling their function, manifesting their negation. Through these workers, the digital world is building its own mind. Scattered throughout the world, these data centers house a collective intelligence of hundreds of millions of people. They are the central nodes of the internet, the physical mechanisms through which the natural world is networked into the digital one. So the next time you search on Bing, expand your customer services with Windows Azure, communicate with employees via Office 365, email your family on Hotmail, or challenge your friends across the world on Xbox Live, you too are tapping into the power of the Microsoft Cloud. The cloud absorbs all data that is given to it. In order to receive more information from the human population of the Earth, a vast market for electronics has been created. Everyone must be plugged into the networks, and everything must be given to the cloud. Each new piece of data allows the digital world to better predict the movements and actions of the people feeding it information. Not only must everyone be watched in this digital future, they must want to be watched. This is where we are teaching the computer to be more like people. Let's go shopping. I'll follow your lead. Well, Microsoft, I think, is in the best position to make sense out of your ecosystem. The future of the living room is where the technology works on your behalf, where it just knows you. It's not about uh, you learning about our technology. It's about our technology learning about you. In and out, out the sky. This is where Microsoft is helping to build the artificial intelligence. Buildings 99, 112, and 113 all house the offices and laboratories of Microsoft Research, the vanguard of the company. It is here that employees are attempting to make computers and programs that can process vaster and vaster amounts of information, with the ultimate goal of bringing the AI into being. Surrounded by Microsoft Research are three facilities operated by Honeywell. Honeywell's Defense Division produced a number of products including cluster bombs, missile guidance systems, napalm, and landmines. 